and welcome to space here from Europe, Spaceport in French Guiana. And as you can see, we're in the middle of a construction boom because this is going to be the new launch pad for the Ariane 6 rocket due to make its maiden flight in July 2020. We're behind the scenes here, finding out what it takes to stay ahead in the space business. On the coast of South America, Europe's rocket engineers are busy building the new Ariane 6 launch pad. This massive construction site has one simple goal, to launch a rocket for half the price of its predecessor. Getting there involves a lot of concrete, steel and manpower. We're here on the Ariane 6 launch pad, so behind me you can see the infrastructure is being built. So that means 500 people working on the civil engineering, the concrete that's going to allow us to launch the Ariane 6 rocket. This is what everyone's working towards, a smooth and successful first launch in July 2020. To be ready by then, teams work in shifts from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., carving the new rocket base from the granite of French Guiana. Right now, they're working on one of the central structures of the pad, the flame trench. When a rocket takes off, the jets of flames from the engines hit the deflector at the bottom of the flue, at the bottom of the hole here. And then with this big tunnel, the big concrete structure, 200 meters long by 20 meters high, the flames, the liquid gases will escape through this tunnel. Everything here has been developed to reduce the time and expense of launching a rocket, including a big switch to building them horizontally rather than vertically like the previous Ariane. The launcher is put together horizontally, which allows the buildings to have much smaller dimensions. So in terms of air conditioning, we're cutting the cost of operation. Once we've assembled the launcher, it will be put on a transporter, and we send it to the launch zone, and there it's raised up vertically. We then bring along the boosters, and at that moment we carry out a general check of the launcher. That gives us the green light to bring along the upper composite with the satellite inside. Once we've done that, we pull back the 90-meter high mobile portico and we go ahead with the launch. Rockets have been blasting off from French Guiana for the past 50 years. On the equator, with the ocean nearby, it's an ideal spot and offers Europe its own gateway to space. However, the business is getting tough, with newcomers like SpaceX, supported by NASA, competing on the market. SpaceX is coming. They have a more modern design, so can offer more attractive prices. That's why we're making Ariane 6 to reduce costs. Ariane 5 has perfect reliability. The Soyuz and Vega haven't failed since day one. Availability is good and planning is stuck to, so we have to get better on costs. That's why we have Ariane 6 with a more modern and modular design that should allow us to reduce costs and get close to or even do better than what SpaceX can offer commercial clients today. Ariane 6 is aiming to meet customer demand in several ways. Firstly, its upper stage can be reignited so it can place several satellites in different orbits. Secondly, it comes in two different versions. The advantage of Ariane 6 is that we have two versions, the 62 and the 64. So 62 has two boosters and 64 has four. So with four boosters, we have maximum performance, so we can put two satellites into geostationary transfer orbit, or one really heavy one. Then with Ariane 62, less powerful, so less expensive, we can put satellites onto really particular orbits. The project is literally blasting ahead. The new launcher uses some components from the existing Vega and Ariane 5 models, such as the Vulcan engine. One of the key new elements is the P120 solid rocket booster, which is currently undergoing testing. We have 
We've made the propellant and we've filled it with propellant. And at the moment in this building, we're getting ready to do some tests. These are really detailed tests carried out with a powerful X-ray. And we make sure the mass and interior of the booster conforms to all of the specifications. Back at the construction zone and the pressure is on. New elements of the launch pad are arriving all the time and need to be installed. In January, the launch platform is going to arrive in Guyana. It's a huge component. It weighs over 500 tons. We're going to have to assemble all that here in the preparation zone and then pull the whole thing over the launch pad flue. While the building work goes on in Guyana, the first new rockets should be produced in mainland Europe in the coming 12 months too. We aim at uh, starting the first batch of production next year, spring next year. So now uh, we can say the industries are ready, they are full speed ahead and we will start to produce Ariane 6 from next year onwards. Once finished, this pad will take an Ariane 6 from preparation to launch in just nine days, far faster than the 30 days needed for its predecessor, the Ariane 5. Now, all year we've been celebrating 60 years of spaceflight in our mini-series Legends of Space. And this month we're looking back to an event that happened here in French Guiana on Christmas Eve 1979, when the first Ariane rocket took off. The first attempt at launch had to be aborted, which was a pretty delicate operation, because we had to empty the rocket stages, clean them out, and get it ready again. We all had the feeling in the pit of our stomachs that, although it might not be the last chance, it would be difficult to go further if this rocket was a failure. The orbit was perfect. There were no big surprises, and there, at that moment, there was a real outburst of joy. That first launch of Ariane is the event that really had the biggest impact on my life on a professional level. Well, it's time for us to say goodbye from French Guiana. Next month, we'll be back with a story about Europe's mission to Mercury. And in the meantime, keep up to date with other news from the universe on our space blog on euronews.com. <laughs>